Now back to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie, only here on V81 Radio. Okay, and we're back. And tonight, we are going to take a closer look at the three divas of uh, Manila Jazz. First of all, uh, we've got uh, a lady who has been, uh, I would say, a crossover artist because she does a lot of musical theater work as well as some jazz performances. So I'd like to call back Miss Lynn Sherman. Hello. Hi everyone in internet land. Okay, hi nice Lynn. Nice to be here, Gracie, once again. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, thank you. Yeah, I, I always enjoy collaborating with you and uh, I we've had some very successful shows in the past. And uh, tonight, let's. I just want to ask a few questions before we play your performance videos, because uh, over the last few years, I know sure. that you, I know that you've been busy doing uh, musical, musical theater work, and uh, maybe you could refresh our memory. Memory, what were these musicals that you worked on over the last few years? Well, actually, the last musical that I worked on, uh, it, it's been a while. <laughs> It was in 2013. It was the Bluebird of Happiness. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that, that was the last one. It's been a couple of years, but um, I have done quite a few uh, previous to that. Uh, there's, my goodness, Aspects of Love, Cabaret, uh, different companies and different um, uh, organizations that I, I was fortunate enough to, to be a part of. Yeah, what's interesting about that last play you did, Bluebird of Happiness, was uh, that you play, you played a very interesting character, right? You, with a beautiful. Yes. I was the villain. I was the villainous cat. Yes. I was the villainous cat in that play, and it's so interesting because um, I'm actually what they call a cat lady. I have eight cats of my own. <laughs> wow, so, you were a natural. Yeah. Yes, it's, you were a natural, and uh, also uh, in the. I remember also seeing you on stage when you did cabaret. That was a very interesting production because, um, first of all, that was in. Um, I know that if I remember correctly, at Green Hills Theater. Yeah. Yeah. When I that saw was, that. I, I think that was in two thousand five or six. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. and uh, I remember it was Monique who played right. that role, Monique, and with the new voice company, with, with Monique's new voice. You know, one of the pandemic is a good old fashioned musical like Cabaret. I know, right? <laughs> wow. <I don't, laughs> it, it might be a while. It might be a while till, till we get to do that again. I know, and what's uh, you know, I, I and what's important also is that um, you you've been over the last few years, ever since we met, uh, I've been yeah. watching both in musical uh, production and in solo gigs because yeah. uh, I remember you had uh, a solo gig with Michael Williams, and I was yeah. there. In yeah. fact, I think that was the first time I met you. During that wow. gig with Michael, yes. What year was that? <laughs> I cannot even remember that year, but uh, I'm sure that um, yeah. you know, uh, that was a memorable evening for me because after that, I always keep on thinking about you every time I did a solo, a jazz solo. Yeah. My, my, Michael and I have uh, a, a couple of duets uh, that we do, I think, whenever we we meet <laughs> whenever we yes. meet, you know we've done shows together uh yes quite a number over the over the past few years yeah yeah my, my it's nice to be collaborating with putting you and michael together your your yeah. you know and then with bond around i'm sure you know there are a lot of ideas that come into play but um what one interesting thing is that um i came across a video of yours yeah. And it was a nice crossover production. And yeah. given the fact that you do musical theater and like you're also a crossover artist. Well, I, I'd like to think so. Um, you know, it's 
this particular song, can I? I'll talk about it a little bit, you know, Sure, uh, sure. It, 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 I really enjoy Madonna. You know, but in 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 the eighties, I, I mid eighties, I listen to a lot of her things, and I always like this song. And so I, I asked Bond, uh, my husband, who is also an arranger, he's a pianist and arranger, to make a tune. And so he, he came up with this arrangement. And my goodness, that was, uh, I think we recorded this maybe in 2000, 2006 or 2007. It, yeah. But uh, okay. I really enjoyed the song. And um, yeah. yeah. And maybe uh, when, when this lockdown is finished and maybe when we have another show, perhaps you can perform that one live in one of my shows. I, I would <laughs> love to. I would love to. I always I can just imagine. <laughs> yeah, so the audience waiting because I'm sure that they're going to enjoy this fantastic rendition of a Madonna classic. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Lynn Sherman's take of I'm Burning Up for Your Love. Let's go, Let's with, go that with that video. Cause I'm on fire And I can't quench my desire Don't you know that I'm burning up for your love You're not convinced that that is enough I put myself in this position Oh, I'm alive And this pounding in my heart Just won't die I'm burning up You know, I, when I first saw it, I, I was so surprised because um, it's not the kind of song that you would normally hear as a jazz piece, but I really yeah. love the way Bond reworked the whole yeah. song and gave it that swing, Fever. jazzy. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 he sort of uh, gave it a, 
a fever inflection. Are you familiar with fever? Yes, okay. that song. Sexy. Yeah. Yeah, that's sexy. I know that song, fever. I, uh, I, and um, it it suits the mood, the tone of uh, that that song. That's so why it actually sort of enhanced it. You know, from being a, a jumpy dance to a more yeah. sexy, sultry, jazzy piece. Now, one of the things yeah. that uh, what's interesting about the next video is the fact that it really reminds me of what you can and <laughs> have a nice drink and enjoy the music and just have a good old time with our dear friends. And when I saw when I saw the next video, it's really a nostalgic piece for me. That's number one. Um, I, I was such a big fan of Ugoy Ugoy Band. Yeah. No? And, uh, when I saw that, they had disbanded a few years ago. So, you know. Well, well let me tell how you did how they get together? Yeah. Okay. How did they get together? Last year, we discovered... Uh, in the middle of the year last year, we discovered that two of our members were coming home. You, now, Boogie was in Australia, and uh, another member was a, um, They were coming back home, and, you know, Kanchawan, are we going to have this reunion? And, you know, a lot of us hadn't played together for years, okay, years. So we were kind of scared, but um, one thing led to the other. J.D. Villanueva said, let's have it on this day, and so on and so forth. So, you know, we, we made it happen. And I guess that one of the things that um, I think of now that you're going to talk about the person who I'm performing with, uh, Cookie Chua, uh, I met sometime in the late 90s, and we had a show together. And if I remember correctly, this was the first time I had also met Cookie. So Cookie met the band for the first time, Ugoy Ugoy, and we had a show with Cookie. Uh, this is not what we sang, but we sang we sang songs together there as well. But it's bringing together friends. So Ugoy Ugoy, uh, if you include last year, we would have been 25 years together. So this was like our 25th reunion, and then we invited people who had been with us since the very beginning and Cookie Chua is one of them. So this is this is fun because it's it's us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is you in your element and uh, with with a big band behind and that, that if there was anything fame in uh, I loved about Uwe Uwe Band was you had a full brass yeah. section, full rhythms, you know. And and uh, you you were unique and and in a sense um it before that it was a long time before Manila had something like that no and I, I, during the nineties when when band and you know put this whole thing together and 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 uh, what, what, how fast twenty five years can go by no kidding yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw when I saw the old members, our bodies had changed. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. You know, but uh, I think the the love for the music, the love, the com the friendship, what you and Van started years ago. You no, know, uh, the, the the passion was still there when I saw this piece, yeah. and and you guys were you know just swinging and having such a fantastic time. And uh, uh, you know, I loved it because it was it was bluesy, edgy. You know, uh, again, some part of all your performances, Lynn. You know, you, you you push the envelope. You you don't go for the safe version. You always push the envelope. You give it yeah. your own unique stamp of um of you know your artistry. So, who would you say influenced you when you know? As, as a, oh wow! As you know, um, I, I'm influenced very much by Diane Shore. Uh, this is going to sound strange, but I, I listened to a lot of '80s bands also, especially before. Though you, you may not hear it here in this <laughs> in this next sure. song, but 
definitely I, I I've been influenced by in the jazz scene Carmen McRae. Um, goodness, who else? Yeah, Th those those yeah. ones that come. But to um, uh, I I can see I can see those influences. I mean, I've seen you perform in different uh, venues and 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 I know that aside from the classic the the classic jazz singers uh, from from way back there's a lot of edginess also especially when it comes to um the present side. <laughs> as an artist and even going into like a, a blues rock sort of you know edgy uh, performance so can you tell us a little bit about the next song well uh, my goodness i this next song is called i can't stop loving you and lots of people have sung it maybe the most famous is ray charles um, actually, this version is lifted off the Diane Shore, Ray Charles version, um, Diane Shore's album, and uh, uh, me and Cookie Chu are going to do our own um, crazy version of it. Uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, so, um, that's I Can't Stop Loving You. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that when you look at this video, you're going to want me a cold beer or a nice glass of red wine. Sit back, relax, and here is Lynn Sherman with the Ugoy Ugoy Band and then with guest artist Cookie Chua. Now it's with me and you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me. 
I'll be joining you shortly with your emperador. Oh, I love you so much. We'll be back shortly with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie only here on V81 Radio.